prebiotics and probiotics comprise a new mantra today, but how do they actually work? And how can you incorporate them into your daily diet? Well, I invite you to join us during the next 30 minutes and learn about prebiotic and probiotic agents and how they work and which foods contain them. You are about to discover some truly incredible edibles. Hello, my name is Charles Bedord, and my guests today are Hema Gundargi and Jessica Keating. <laughs> Hema is a graduate student, and Jessica is an undergraduate student in the Department of Nutrition and Dietetics at San Jose State University. Hema and Jessica, welcome to The Better Part. It's always a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have both of you. Um, before we get too far into our discussion, we need to clarify some terms, perhaps. First of all, can you tell me, what is a gut microbiome, and is this a new terminology? Well, gut microbiome is uh, a terminology which is now becoming very popular, but basically what it means is the microbes, microbes consist of um, bacteria, yeast, fungi, which are all residing in us and on us. And don't worry about it that bacteria all are bad. There's, there are many bacteria which are really good for you. So uh, this is a uh, gut microbiome is basically all the bacteria and all the different type of microbes that live in your system. And when you say our system, does this include from your mouth all the way down through the gut? Or? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And there are different types in different parts of your uh, gut. Yes, there are many, there are millions of uh, microbes that reside there. And is this a new terminology or has it been around for a long time and people just haven't heard about it much? Well, I think now what's happened is with all um, the genome sequ the sequencing, which has become very, very sophisticated, and also the computer technology. So now we are looking at our body in a very different way. And microbiome uh, is, is a new concept which has come with the latest research um, and technology. So now uh, we are looking at our body in a very unique way. I see. That's very interesting. Can you tell me, uh, how does a person's, how do they get their microbiome? Where does it come from and how, how does it develop over the years? Um, well, your microbiome first is established actually from the birth canal. So when the baby comes out, uh, they are introduced to the mother's microbiome. And from there until the age of three, their microbiome um, is developing. And at three, they're considered mature. So. So does it continue developing though after the age of three? If, for instance, if they go to diff if they eat different foods or go to different environments? Yes. So not necessarily developing, but it's always changing. It's extremely sensitive to um, environmental factors, lifestyle factors, dietary factors. So the concentrations between different microbes within your microbiome are always changing. So then if it develops, if the uh, fetus is exposed when it comes through the birth canal, then does the, uh, the, I take it the microbiome reflects the mother's microbiome? Yes, that's right. And in fact, uh, the new research shows that a baby who, which is born uh, via C-section, cesarean section, has totally different microbiomes. And they're oh, trying really? to do very, uh, the latest research is trying to see if they can take the microbes from the mother's uh, birth canal and swab the baby as soon as they're born. And they're trying to see if that affects, because the microbiota is, is very unique, and they're starting off the baby on a right path by giving the swab from the mother's canal, uh, okay. birth canal. Now, one other ter two other terms I want to uh, discuss. First of all, what is a probiotic? We hear this term all the time. We pick up uh, yogurt and they say probiotics, and we hear, hear it in advertising. What exactly is a probiotic agent? And can you, can you give some examples, perhaps? Yes, probiotic are live uh, bacteria which are in foods, and when you ingest in a certain uh, quantity, it helps your digestion. And uh, probiotics are there in fermented foods like uh, yogurt, um, in miso paste, in tempeh, in kefir, 
and um, this is something which now you see it in the market, but you've been eating it all the while. Uh, so it's not a totally new concept, but it's been marketed much more with all the probiotic label that's there on all the processed foods. Now you've used a term in there, and that's a live uh, bacteria or yes. so on. So I understand that there's a couple types of foods out there which contain back, you know, mainly bacteria, but do the, uh, and, and some of these bacteria are dead bacteria. Yes. So does a probiotic agent have to have live cultures or live bacteria? Yes, probiotic is live bacteria. We do eat a lot of dead bacteria. I mean, the meat which you eat is, is dead bacteria, but, <laughs> but we're okay with it. Our, our system handles uh, everything. But the live bacteria is the probiotic that I'm mentioning. Uh, one other uh, term I wanted to clear up a little bit, and that is prebiotic. Can you give me any, what is a prebiotic? And can you give me some examples of prebiotic agents? So a prebiotic is basically what your probiotics are eating. And prebiotics can be anything from um, broccoli, bananas, chocolate, bread, um, really a wide variety of foods, but um, it's basically... Uh, basically prebiotics are green leafy vegetables, apples, bananas, um, cabbage, cauliflower, uh, broccoli, dark chocolate. So we okay. have some good prebiotic That sounds like food. my kind of prebiotic. Yes, yes, yes. So essentially the, pro, the probiotic bacteria live off the prebiotics. Yes, yes. And yes. I take it these also include carbohydrates, complex polysaccharides, yes, etc. Yes, that's okay. right, that's right. Okay. Now, one other term we've heard about is a, symbi a symbiotic state in the system. Tell us a little bit about what that means as far as nutrition goes. A symbiotic state basically means a balance of the good and the bad bacteria that's there in your system. But another term that comes to mind with prebiotic and probiotic is when you have a good amount of prebiotic and probiotic, you have something called a symbiotic diet. And we really all should aim for having a symbiotic diet. Uh, what do I mean by that? So uh, basically, uh, you know yogurt has probiotic, and you know banana has prebiotic. You combine banana and yogurt, and you got a symbiotic, which your gut really enjoys. So there's so many combinations that you can match the pro with the pre, and you get a wonderful symbiotic, which your gut just loves. <laughs> So what happens if you get, let's say, out of this homeostatic state uh, between uh, prebiotics and probiotics? How, how do you know that maybe something is not right? So that's when you start getting problems with uh, digestion. And there's a lot of research going on about it. And uh, there's uh, a, a research being done on if there's a connection between this uh, imbalance that causes, um, uh, what is it, IBD and IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. Okay. So there are a lot of research going on about that. So uh, we might have a delicate balance here between diarrhea and constipation. Yes, yes. <laughs> in a sense. So that's, that's interesting. So uh, you can kind of adjust that by picking the foods, the substrates for the bacteria yes. and uh, molds and so on, and yeah. then the correct bacteria and uh, microflora. Yes. So what can I do? And it may, perhaps you've already answered this question to an extent, but what can I do to help my microbiota f flourish or my, pre my probiotic bacteria? Excuse there, me. <laughs> uh, so basically, um, there are a couple of things which help the microbiota, and there are a couple of things which actually um, affect the microbiota. So, for example, antibiotics, it kills the infection and kills the bacteria, but at the same time, it kills the good bacteria. And right. so antibiotic uh, should be taken with caution. You should not just run to the antibiotic for the smallest little problem. Try and see if your body works it out. But what antibiotic does, it, it sort of messes up with the probiotic. Uh, so one thing you can do is use pro, uh, antibiotic only when needed. And okay. there are times when you do need antibiotic, when you're really sick, you do have to take a resort to antibiotic. But don't 
overuse antibiotic. That's one thing that you can do to help preserve um, the balance. And of course, eating these right foods is, is right. a good good way to balance your um, you know microbiota. Now, one of the things we've talked about in terms of probiotics, we've talked about yogurt. Of course, of course, was the dairy food, and I imagine other types of dairy foods also. Uh, dairy-related foods, I should say, things uh, such as cottage cheese and so on, might also contain uh, probiotic bacteria. Uh, what about people who cannot tolerate uh, dairy foods? Are there uh, probiotic foods that are, are not dairy in nature? Yes, there are many. Uh, you, you should look at different cultures. And basically, probiotics is very prevalent in fermented foods. So when I say fermented foods, I'm looking at uh, miso paste, which is used in Japanese food. Miso paste, you have the miso soup in uh, then sauerkraut, which is cabbage. Oh, I love sauerkraut. Oh, you're doing your gut a lot of favor. I love sauerkraut. By, so uh, uh, sauerkraut is one. Tempeh is another soy product which has uh -huh. been fermented. And the new drink, which is very popular these days, is kombucha. Kombucha is good. Kefir, it's another drink, which is sort of a variation kombucha, of Kombucha, is that where this guy raises sobies? I'm not sure He's about... He's got little sobe bacteria that float around the top of yes. this drink? Yes, yeah. Okay. That's kombucha. Yeah, I've, I've heard about that. It's been written up in several magazines recently. Yes, and kefir drink is as another very interesting probiotic drink, uh, which has live bacteria. It's a little different in taste, but I would urge you to taste it. You know, you get used to different types of flavors because you want to eat as many diverse foods as possible to get different types right. of um, good bacteria, good probiotics in your system. Now, I'm going to play the devil's advocate here with you, and I'm going to say, this all sounds very good and well, but why can't I just eat what I want, what tastes good to me, and if I need anything else, I'll just go to the uh, health food store and buy, buy a vitamin supplement, take a pill, and be done with it. Is, is, is that an alternative approach? Well, that's a lazy person's alternative. But <laughs> let me tell you, the supplements, there are a lot of probiotic supplements which are there in the market. But uh, the supplement is not regulated by the FDA. So there is no control about exactly how much of probiotic strains are there in the supplement. And also, um, the one easy thing to remember is when you eat in the natural foods, it's very rare that you will overdo. I mean, how much of yogurt are you going to drink? You're not going to drink a gallon of yogurt. So you're never going to be overdoing your probiotic, whereas in supplement, it's very easy to overdo, and we don't have too much research which supports, which has actually done clinical trials with the use of um, supplements, and what happens if you do way too much probiotics. You know, that, that's, a good that's a good thing you brought up there, because I've seen many uh, vitamin supplement bottles, and they'll say, you know, recommended daily requirement percentage of, and they'll say 300, 400, 500 percent. And I often wonder, do you really need five times uh, the recommended daily dose of this? I think we can do a different show on that topic. There's so much to talk about it. But coming to probiotic, we really don't know mm -hmm. what happens if you have too much probiotic. And you're not going to overdose yourself with probiotic uh, bacteria mm -hmm. in the natural form. I can assure you, without having embarrassing... <laughs> without <problems>. embarrassing, embarrassing <laughs> consequences, yes. Yes. Now, I've got a friend who told me that uh, he uh, took a probiotic drink. He's an athlete, and uh, he was having some stomach problems beforehand, and it just cleared him up amazingly. I took that same drink. It didn't agree with me at all. Why is that? Well, why do people react so differently? Well, um, everyone's different, and also you're... Because your microbiome uh, is affected by so many different things, um, how one person is affected by uh, something such as a kombucha um, is going to be different than how someone else could be, just simply based maybe on different lifestyle factors or stress levels or just like what's actually going in, in, uh, on inside of the body. Uh, well, I can say the microbiota of each person is, is like our, um, you know, the thumbprint. 
each person has a very unique system, very unique way mm -hmm. they handle food. So what works for one person may not necessarily work for you. So you always have to, even when I say probiotic and prebiotic is good, always take it with, um, you know, take small steps towards getting the full dosage. You don't want to overdo at the first time you take it because you want to see how your body reacts. As I said, every human being is very unique and very different. So you want to take it slowly and then build up the uh, level that you want to consume. So this is a situation, it sounds like that you need to go in and try a little bit of this, try a little bit of that, see what works for you. Yes. And play around with it. Yes, yes. It's just that you can't go in and say, well, I'm going to go ahead yeah. and eat two cartons of yogurt today, and yes. that's going to do me yes. wonders. I exactly, mean, exactly. Okay, it may or may not. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jessica, I understand you have uh, some good knowledge about an area which I find kind of fascinating, and that is the reaction between probiotics and a person's mood that uh, essentially the probiotics that you bring into your system that can not only affect your gut, but uh, your mind also, and uh, how, how you feel. Can you tell us a little bit about, please, about the gut-brain connection with probiotics? Yes, so this is an extremely new um, and exciting connection that has just been discovered within the microbiome research. And it's basically showing that your microbiota have the ability to manipulate and manufacture um, neuro, uh, neurotransmitters, which regulate your mood. Oh, really? Yeah, and they also have connection to um, several psychological states such as anxiety, depression, sociability. So this connection um, basically is paving the way for future um, treatment methods that can use the body to treat the body and um, is kind of um, broadening on not only how we understand the body, but also how we can treat it. So it's super exciting research and um, there's just it's kind of the missing link, I guess you could say, to understanding the body on a whole level because this is the smallest um, possible thing within your body and it's affecting things that are massive, like mood and uh, your anxiety levels. And this is something that can benefit the general public, not just people with uh, psychological abnormalities. Or Now, when we hear about um, things that affect your mood and neurotransmitters and so on, one of the terms we hear all over the press today are serotonins. And there's another one, I believe, it's called GABA. Uh, are you implying that uh, these bacteria actually produce serotonin and GABA? Yes, so lactobacillus has the ability to create um, GABA and really? um, serotonin. So I yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of crazy actually, like neurotransmitters are being produced within your gut and then uh, through various pathways within the body, they're being able to connect to the central nervous system, which is your body's basically electric wiring and it's mm -hmm. controlling, uh, like through your brain, controlling pretty much everything. So the smallest thing is controlling the largest thing, which is extremely amazing. <laughs> yeah, so this research sort of cements that uh, phrase that we used all the time, gut feeling, gut reaction, gut instinct. So basically, there is a big connection between your gut and your brains. Now this really sounds exciting and, and very new. I take it it is, correct? Yes, it is. Okay, that, so essentially to put it in uh, Jargon, you know, this kind of supports a you know, way you are what you eat. <laughs> yes, exactly. That is so true. That is so true. You can really manipulate your microbiome uh, by the foods that you eat, and they've done so many clinical studies which shows that even um, in a, a couple of weeks, your microbiome can change. It's a very dynamic area. Your gut is a very dynamic area. It's constantly moving, constantly evolving, constantly changing. And so when you take processed foods and you know foods that are not very high in microbiome, the good bacteria sort of mellow down. But if you take these uh, wonderful uh, fruits and uh, yogurt and sourdough bread, it helps them uh, good bacteria grow. So, you know, this implies something, and I, I, there may not be any evidence at all for this, and I may be way off base, but this almost implies that uh, probiotic foods may have some connection with uh, treating mental illness. 
Well, not necessarily treating mental illness because the focus really is on the microbes. Uh, the probiotics, it, you know, the action they're taking is basically just to influence the, the microbiome, but right. the microbiome, right. it's what's really like having, you know, connections to your mood and um, just several psychological kind of uh, actions and whatnot. But the thing to, I guess the takeaway point is uh, what people can, who are watching this show can use this research to do in their own lives. Um, basically being aware of the connection between your microbe and you know your mood basically but also um, one thing that you can do in your diet is to focus on food diversity mm -hmm. because the microbiome can basically basically be thought of as like an animal kingdom you have all these different species and they're all dependent on each other and it's really important that they're all in balance as Hema was talking about before mm -hmm. with being in a symbiotic state so you want to make sure that you eat a really rich diversity of foods mm -hmm. because that um, supports a very rich diversity uh, microbe diversity which is um, what you want for uh, good gut health you want a lot of mm -hmm. different strains and the only way you can do that is by eating a wide variety of food, so. So then, uh, I, I, well, something I'd like to ask is that does the Food and Drug Administration or the FDA uh, officially recognize any proposed benefits for prebiotic or probiotic agents? Um, as of now, uh, FDA does not uh, support uh, the claims of the probiotics because uh, before uh, FDA, uh, you know, recommends the use, they do a lot of clinical trials. Right. And as of now, it 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 does not uh, support it because it's a supplement. Uh, a supplement is not regulated by FDA. Right. Um, so it's up to your own discretion that you take. Uh, FDA doesn't have a say on it. And that's why the supplements which you get in the market, you don't know what's in it because FDA does not control it. So you don't know exactly how much of probiotics are there in those little pills. That's right. Okay, so uh, right now uh, under FDA, you cannot claim that a prebiotic uh, agent or probiotic bacteria can be used to cure or treat any particular disease. But on the other hand, uh, do physicians themselves, since physicians can recommend things off-label, uh, do they sometimes recommend uh, these agents, prebiotics and probiotics? Um, it's, it's a very emerging field and physicians are still waiting to hear more about it through clinical research and studies. But still, some physicians use their um, knowledge for certain cases, uh, for certain individuals who have certain problems. They may use the probiotic, but it is not a standard like, okay, I'm giving antibiotic, I'm giving probiotic. It's not a standard right. procedure. Uh, it, it depends from uh, patient to patient, and the doctor uses his uh, discretion about because it. One time I went in for to a doctor, and in the last couple of years, he told me, you know, you should try, you should try taking, uh, eating yogurt. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so again, you know, yogurt, you can never overdo. With uh, supplements and, uh -huh. uh, you know, those drinks and capsules, you can overdo. So with yogurt, yes, you can always enjoy yogurt and get the benefits of probiotic. Okay, or enjoy many of the foods that we yes. have here on the countertop. Yes. Um, now, let's say the consumer uh, says, oh, this sounds all well and good. So I'm going to go into a uh, good quality supermarket today and I'm going to buy some uh, probiotic agents or foods with these agents. How do they know they're getting what, they're, what they want to get? Well, the is best, there some specific labeling, for instance? The best part is when you take food in the natural form, you don't have labels. Like broccoli and cabbage doesn't come with a label. But research and a lot of clinical studies have suggested that uh, eating broccoli and cabbage does help the probiotic. Um, then yogurt has live bacteria. So when you get yogurt, maybe you can check and see if it's got live bacteria. Good because there's some, bac uh, some yogurts which don't have live bacteria. Uh, then you see kombucha. So maybe when you're looking for um, any probiotic fermented foods, see if there's a term called as uh, bacteria, live bacteria in it. Now, one of the terms that we hear often in, uh, especially dairy products, is pasteurized. Does pasteurization kill bacteria? Um, I'm not too familiar with it. Okay. There may be some studies in it, but I'm not familiar with it. Okay. 
Well, uh, do you ha either, does either have you have any last minute comments that you'd like to make? We're about out of time here as far as the subject area. I find this very fascinating, okay. very. Yeah. Um, I think probiotic and prebiotic foods are there in your grocery stores. I would like you to eat, enjoy, and have a happy gut. Okay, have a happy gut. That's, that sounds like good, good wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Hema, Jessica, I want to thank both of you so much for joining us on the uh, better part today. And I'm going to go home and indulge in some uh, chocolate. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you thank so you. much. Thanks for watching today's Better Part Show, and we hope that you found it interesting. Remember that you can view this and other Better Part Shows on YouTube and Roku. Also, I would like to invite our TV viewers to join us and become members of the Better Part. Visitors are always welcome to attend our meetings held at 9.30 a.m. on Tuesdays at the Cupertino Senior Center. If you are interested in becoming a Better Part member, please contact the Senior Center for more information or simply attend one of our meetings.